Hey, it's Sarah with House Copper. Today we're in the shop and we're gonna do a step-by-step -step on building um, one kind of hinge that um, can be sufficed. Um, it's great, I'm using it for boxes. It's on some of my other videos, but this is gonna be um, much more detailed on how to do this. Um, and uh, you can use these obviously for any kind of application that the um, mechanism will work for in terms of, um, you know, if you have two flat surfaces next to each other, you'd have to adjust a little bit for any curved surfaces, um, but the, the gist is there. So we're gonna do building a hinge, um, very detailed. And um, let me know if you have any questions as we go along. Here we go. All right, so we have um, hinges here that uh, Bob and I built in his um, shop. They are made out of copper. Um, and as you can see, they've been um, brazed shut here. And so that's not solder, that's actual brazing work with, um, with a, a higher acetylene torch. Um, and also we are, um, uh, you basically have to, have to use a very different kind of flux and solder. Um, it's like a, like a, like a, a brazing stick essentially. So don't use regular solder with this. I mean, you could, it just won't hold up as well um, in terms of strength. So this essentially just bonds the ends together. Then I also have, this is a broken piece of a drill bit. Um, and it is actually, if you can see, it is slightly bigger in diameter than the copper um, that we used to make the loop handles. And the reason for going just a little bit bigger is because obviously you want this to be able to move within the hinge piece that we're gonna be making today. Now these can be round, they can be like a D-ring like this is, um, they can be more oblong in shape. Um, Bob makes all kinds of shapes. I don't make as many of these, but D-ring is usually the most popular and you can obviously make them yourself. Once you've um, brazed it shut, you're gonna set it on the anvil over here like this. And I don't know if you can see it and I'm gonna bring it closer. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna hammer it. In this case, I wanna hammer it completely flat. So you're gonna do that and you're gonna use a non-metal hammer because you want to very gently kind of um, form these without um, denting the copper and it's because it's still pretty soft metal. So we now have, you know, finalized our actual D-rings, but now we have to make the actual hinges themselves. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of sheet copper and I'm going to cut it on the bench shears here, the stomp shears, and then I'm going to use a little snips and we're going to just kind of cut the edges to make them fancy. You can make a square hinge, which is what it'll look like when I first do this. Um, but you're also going to, um, uh, want to make it want to make in the end the end the edge is a little cute which I'll show you how to do that as well but first we're going to just start off with a square hinge um, and because these are custom hinges I'm just kind of gonna gauge how big I want to do it if you're gonna make a lot of something obviously take measurements so that you have them for posterity because you can make 500 of them or 50 or 20 but um, so here we go um, we're just gonna cut I'm estimating I'm gonna go with like like a one inch hinge I think will look really nice on and I don't want it to fall into the abyss below so I'm gonna hold on to this okay. so here we go now this is what I'm going to make at least two hinges out of but um, let's see we're gonna say if I go two inches Another two, and another um, two. All right, I'll have to cut another piece. But we're gonna start with this, and um, now I'm gonna show you how we use that little leftover piece of a broken um, drill bit to make the next part. 
Okay, so I have my future hinge and I have the drill bit, right? The broken drill bit. You can have a full size drill bit too. I just happen to have the right size and a broken one. When I put um, this in the vise, you'll notice I don't put it right in the center to fold this. The key here is to have it slightly off center. So you're gonna kind of put it off here when you fold it. And the reason for that is you have to make room for the loop itself. Um, and then you can just file off any differences um, or cut off little differences after the fact. But you do wanna be slightly off center when you fold this over the, uh, over the drill bit piece. Just slightly off center. I'm gonna pull this around. If you watch now, I'm actually not gonna pull from the back. I'm gonna put the um, this almost onto like half covering the um, half covering where it's around here. So you're gonna almost choke up and then slide to snap it. So you you choke up and then pull. I'm gonna try and do this overhead too. So if you see where that is, it's it's holding right there. And then when I tighten the vise here, it's gonna kind of slide that whole thing. And I'm doing this with one hand, so bear with me. Normally there should be two, and I'm doing it th this through the phone. Oh my gosh. Let's see if I can show you. There, it slid off. And then I clamped it again to tighten it one more time. So the first time was to kind of shut it and the second time was to tighten it even further. Okay, so now we have a hinge, right? But it's not done. Um, so because it is straight like this right now, if I were to put it against a flat surface, like the interior of this box, which is where it belongs, it would um, kind of not lay, I don't know if you can see, but it, see how it doesn't really lay super flat against there? So the only way it really looks nice is to pop the hinge above. Now, if you want the hinge to be above, that's fine. But the original make of this had the hinge on the inside um, so that you can fold the handle down and have it be flat across like that. So I need to change this from straight on to kind of folded to one side, almost like a nine, but you obviously don't want to lo lose your circle. So you have to put your drill bit piece back in and then go to town with hammering it. So we have our drill bit in. We're gonna put it against here. See how I do that? And we're again gonna take a non-metal hammer, and we're gonna slowly try and make one side flatter than the other. We're gonna try and make a nine, a nine shape. So it'll lay flat. So I'm kind of hitting right along the edge here And now you can see it's slightly curved so that I have a flat side on this side that can lay flat against a flat surface. So I now have a slight nine, essentially. Does that make sense? All right, and you know, I'm gonna probably mess around with this just a little bit longer. You don't need to watch every single hammer stroke, but you can even go a little bit deeper, which I may do. Pretty deep nine. And now I can put that against the flat side of the box so that when I have the hinge bent down, it'll, um, it'll be hidden. I wanna show you a troubleshooting thing really quick before I forget. Um, this one folded a little crooked. I don't know if you can see how it's off kilter here. You don't want that. And you're not gonna be able to fix that um, unless you do it ahead of time. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide your little piece that you're using your drill bit and you're gonna very gently 
um, hammer this hammer it down again non-metal hammer and uh, straighten it out but still keeping the shape um, for your for your loop and there we have it nice and straight Okay, so we have my hinge, right? Our hinge, one of the four I have to make, but it's still a little off kilter. It's not perfect and we wanna make it a little fancier, right? Before we attach it. So I'm just gonna cut off my excess on one, wherever there's excess so it's even. And then I'm gonna just clip off and kind of eyeball the corners. So now we have a really cute hinge and um, we're gonna slide in the one side um, with, with the D-rings and then the way the original is, which is what we're trying to copy, we're gonna put a little bit of thin solder and flux in between here and some thin flux here with some flat solder and then we're just gonna heat this whole thing up with the D-ring inside, which I'm gonna show you next. I have a hinge, I have a D-ring, I'm gonna put the D-ring into the hinge very carefully. There we go, you hear that snap. And as you can see, it moves because of course we used just the right amount. For this. And now, I'm gonna add a bit of flux, a bit of flux. And I hammered out some really thin pieces. Here. Take a piece of solder. We're gonna put it where I just fluxed it. It's gonna run once the heat starts. And this might work. You just need a piece of metal to hold it down. All right.
with hinges that are up and can fold down. That's what they look like inside. And once again, up and they stay. It's a whole tree box. Obviously this works for any kind of box, um, but there are your hinges. If you have any questions about any part of this build, let me know. If you have any questions about hinges, let me know. If I don't know, Bob knows. So someone can clearly answer your questions. Um, but in the meantime, thank you for uh, joining me. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and tell all your friends about the copper shop. Uh, Cause everybody loves copper. Anyway, all right, thank you and see you next time.